versus the Verina Blue Devils. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz. We welcome you to Verina High School in Richmond, Virginia for this battle between the 17 and five Bethel Bruins and the 21 and two Verina Blue Devils. And uh, Bob, we've got a matchup between the Lady Bruins. Uh, they were, were a team that were runner-ups in the Eastern uh, region as well as in the Peninsula District. They are led by uh, freshman Joanne Andrews, and uh, we should see a real good ball game from both of these teams. We really will, Tim. Uh, the young lady that pitches, Mandy Dunn, that pitches for Verina was uh, all-state pitcher as a sophomore, so she has got a, a, a tremendous arm. Uh, they've been struggling of late. They've been the Verina Blue, uh, Blue Devils offensively, but their pitching is held up. Uh, we will see a, a quick game today, and as far as the time factor, both of these young ladies can pitch the ball real well. Uh, I'm really concerned about the Bruins. That, that a lot of people didn't think they would be here, and uh, that may be to their advantage, Tim. They, you know, they're they're playing in a position that a lot of people thought that the Denby Patriots would be. They had uh, had won the district uh, title pretty handily. And uh, Bruins come in and won a couple of good games against the, the Kickatan Warriors and got into the playoffs. And uh, all it does is get out and play good good ball, and uh, you can make it to the next level. Well, of course, the uh, the secret and the advantage to this will be the, the pitching of Joanne Andrews. She must uh, do well in order for the Bruins to be competitive. Uh, she has done extremely well this year. We've seen her twice, or at least I have. You saw her with Kickatan. Uh, where she pitched a great game, and Kigatan was uh, was beaten in a game that uh, truly they were favored to win. And then, of course, uh, in the uh, uh, Eastern Regionals, uh, they defeated Great Bridge, a team that was favored to beat them. Uh, and Joanne Andrews just had a superb game that game. She pitched a one-hitter, second batter in the game, got the only hit against her all afternoon. So she was just dominating uh, in that particular encounter. So. The, the Joanne Andrews uh, freshman, she has uh, done, done a great job for Larry Estep's team. And, of course, uh, they have one or two other things that have happened here. They've got two really key players, Jennifer Hughes and Karen Jones, who have been chosen to uh, uh, all-star teams. But Jennifer Hughes has come down ill on the yeah. trip up here and will not start and probably will not play at all. So this could be a big factor. Really, yeah, he, he took uh, and made some changes. He moved Mary Godwin from left field to center field and then brought in uh, uh, and brought in, I'm sorry, brought uh, Melissa Bates, moved her to center field, and brought Mary Godwin in at, at left field. So he's made a couple of changes, Larry Eastep, but uh, he's, you know, he, he feels he's loose, the girls are loose, they can go out and, uh, you know, all it takes is one good game of this competition. If you play well, you go on as you look at the umpires, Tim. The men in blue, Dave Hunt will be behind the plate, John Cobb and Bob Gary will be the base umpires. Uh, this game is starting at around 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, it is a very muggy, still afternoon. There was rain earlier, but we appear to be in a situation now. I see blue sky virtually uh, entirely around us. So uh, with any luck at all, Bob, we will get this game in. Uh, and, and I'll and be we'll have to worry about the rain. <laughs> well, I can dig that. That sounds all right. good to me. Leading off for the Bruins will be Melissa Bates, number one. She is the center fielder, and she'll face... The uh, pitcher, Mandy Dunn, the very dominating young lady from Verina. The right-hander winds, delivers, and first pitch is a call strike. Well, Larry asked, uh, I had talked with him earlier, and he came up here and watched Verina uh, play the uh, finals uh, last week. I think it was Tuesday, and he said this young lady's got a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. That he's going to move his girls up into the uh, batting order. The play at first, a good play by Verina as Melissa Bates laid down the bun, and uh, as quick as she is, she still was out by about two steps at first base. Well, the, the, bump, the bump went right back to Mandy Dunn, the pitcher, and she had no problems making the throw. Uh, if the ball would have been closer to the line, forcing the uh, first baseman to, to cover it, we might have had a different situation. Call strike to Stephanie Boyd. She's the shortstop, number eight, second batter in the uh, game for the Bruins. And she's batting around 326, Tim, so. Uh, Pitch is a little bit low. Uh, we need to explain to the uh, our fans, we are not directly behind the, the plate. We don't have the advantages of uh, seeing where the pitches go, so. One and one the count. Swing and a foul ball right side, out of play. One ball, two strikes to count. 
And you can see how late she's coming around on that ball. That's how much speed this Spandy Dunn has. Uh, young lady got a piece of the ball. Uh, Stephanie did, but it was well to the right side of the plate as another come in high. Two and two the count. One away here in the top of the first. Mandy Dunn on the mound for Verina. .23 ERA. She's been almost untouchable all year long. A little bit high, runs the count full. So Stephanie Boyd now with a, a good look at that last pitch. And so many times when a pitcher has great speed, you make up your mind you're going to swing long before the pitch is thrown. <laughs> so I know speaking from experience, uh, but a good at-bat here for Stephanie Boyd. Full count. Swing and foul back. She stays alive. And she knew that ball was going to be close to the plate. This young lady has got a lot of... Uh, of uh, control, uh, Coach uh, Clary, Randy Clary. Randall Clary, yep. Yeah, says that she has tremendous control, has really developed it over the last year. Fouled back out of play. One down here in the top half of the first. There you see the field. It is uh, out here in what I guess at one point in time was a uh, farm. They cleared this off. There's still fields over to uh, the area directly behind home plate. Uh, so uh, this rural area of Richmond. Ball hit up the middle, taken by the shortstop, over to first, off the mark, and reaching safely will be Stephanie Boyd. <laughs> Tim, I was backing away. That ball was coming. I got a fence in front of me. <laughs> like the knock fell out of my chair. If I fall down, pick me up, will you? Would have been a close play in any event, but uh, I'm not sure how they'll record that, but we'll at this point in time, assume it was an error on the shortstop's throw. And it brings up the batter, Melina Edwards, the second baseman for the Bruins. One away. First pitch is high. You know, if you get a couple of hits or uh, cause an error or something like that at the beginning of the game, you can uh, maybe shake the pitcher up a little bit. Call strike, one and one. Well, that ball was right at the knees. In fact, from my perspective, it was, looked like a little low, but I'm not directly behind the plate. So. One of the things that, uh, that I read about this uh, young pitcher, Mandy Dunn, was that uh, this year, unlike last year, she has gotten better location on her pitches. Uh, I'm told that last year she threw a lot of balls right down the middle. She had yeah. a, a good extra eye for uh, throwing strikes, but of course you throw down the middle, you're gonna get hit. And now she's got the ability to, to throw that pitch at the knees and on the corners. Well, uh, she's got a good rise and a good sinker, I know. And then her changeup is the uh, uh, is a curve. So uh, she's got uh, a variety of pitches. But you're right, it's location. If you can hit the corners, as we've seen uh, in a lot of the uh, softball and baseball games we've done, to, uh, that's where the pitcher gains an advantage by uh, getting the corners. Two and two the count. Runner on first, one away. Hit down the right field line, and a nice catch by the right fielder playing shallow. And quickly back to first is Stephanie Boyd to avoid the double play. But an excellent play by the right fielder from Verina, and that would be Colleen Wade, who made an excellent catch oh, right at the fence. And she ran in, and as soon as she caught the ball, she hit the fence, Tim. So it was, you're right. It was a good thing there was not a pole there, but she, she may have lost the ball or may have gotten hurt. Katie Minnick will be the batter, with Boyd still resting on first. Two away here in the top of the first. Minnick takes the strike. Katie on the season, batting 305, and she is just a sophomore. Well, this is a very young team for Larry Eastep. He's got four seniors, and two of them are starting. Ball low and on the play. And out at second, Stephanie Boyd, in an attempt to steal, is tagged out for the third out of the inning. So the Bruins get a base runner on the error, but that base runner is erased on the attempted steal. And Katie Minnick will be the batter for the Bruins in the second when they come back up to bat. For the Blue Devils, leading off will be 
Nakoma Sowers, followed by Colleen Wade and the pitcher Mandy Dunn, the do-up batters in the bottom half of the first inning. So the Bruins have to be uh, a little bit, as we watch a, a replay of the attempted steal, or excuse me, that's not the steal, but in fact that fine catch by the right fielder, the earlier play. But I started to say the Bruins have to be in, uh, at least encouraged by the fact that they were able to get a base runner. And, and to be quite frank with you, uh, Mandy Dunn has rarely allowed even that. And Tim, that's more because of her pitching prowess than her feeling as we can watch the attempted steal here, Tim. And the ball was there well in advance. Had the young lady slid earlier, she may have gotten underneath the tag. The tag was high, but uh, she didn't uh, get underneath it as you see the first three b batters coming up. Now, Verona has uh, an incredibly potent batting attack. They, as a team, are you ready for this? Every starter batted 300 or better. Wow. Every starter bats 300 or better, and as a team, they bat 383. Oh, jeez. So, you know, the, you're talking about a, a batting powerhouse here, and Joanne Andrews will uh, will be facing a stiff challenge. But the young freshman has uh, showed a great deal of poise, and that's one of the reasons uh, that Larry Eastep is so high on this young lady is not only has she developed a good arm, but she's uh, developed the poise to go along with it has played extremely well in the big games. And this is as big a game as you can get. This is the Eastern Regional, excuse me, Eastern, uh, I'll get it right yet, the state quarterfinals. There you go. First pitch is a ball to Nakoma Sowers, the center fielder for the Blue Devils. Big right-hander winds and delivers, popped up right side. Second baseman calls for it and makes the catch for the first out. So an easy play for Melina Edwards on the pop-up from Sowers. And that'll bring up Colleen Wade, the right fielder, number two. Andrews has the signal, Wines delivers, is bunted down the third baseline. Throw over to first, in time for the out. Oh, a nice play, play by uh, the third baseman for the Bruins, Tim. That was just an excellent uh, catch and throw by Kat. Katie Minnick, man, what did she, she charge it the way she has to do and just made an excellent throw. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Mandy Dunn, batting third in the lineup. Andrews' first pitch is well high and out of the strike zone. Two down in the bottom half of the first inning, no score. You're watching the Bethel Bruins' Lady Bruins and Verina's Lady Blue Devils. Fouled back for a strike. But the one thing you, you can say about both of these tem teams, Tim, they're up there swinging the bat. They're not looking for a, uh, a, a walker uh, there. If that ball is close to the strike zone, they're swinging at it. This one is swung on and hit to short center field. An excellent effort to get to the ball by Melissa Bates, but she is unable to do so, and Mandy Dunn will reach on the single. And that'll bring up Sherry Lanning, the catcher. That was just like a, a, a Texas leaguer, Tim. It fell right in the, in the hole. They, both young ladies made a gallant effort to get at the center fielder and the, the second baseman. And making no excuses for the effort, Melissa Bates uh, made a fine uh, effort at it. That's just not her regular position. She normally plays left field, and That's Jennifer correct. Hughes, who would normally start there and uh, is ill, did not. But uh, good effort by Melissa Bates, no question about that. First pitch to Lanning is a ball. 1-0 oh the count, two away in the bottom of the first. Foul back out of play. There's one of the rules in fast pitch softball is you cannot lead off the base. You cannot leave the base, I'm told, if I understand the rules correctly, until the, the ball has left the pitcher's hand. 
I don't know if it's the pitcher's hand or crosses the plate. Let's see how that works. Let's watch and see here. One and one account. And she left as the ball left the pitcher's hand. Call strike two. So ahead on the count, one ball and two strikes. Andrews now has landing where she wants her. Each team has had a runner. Andrews delivers and call strike three. Caught the inside corner. That was a nice pitch, Tim. Excellent location by Jennifer. He, uh, not Jennifer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get my, uh, my young lady Joanne straight Andrews. here. Joanne Andrews put that pitch right where they couldn't. Uh, it looked like a ball, but it was right in the, the area that the umpire has been calling strikes and got the inside corner. So we've completed one inning. One hit for the Blue Devils. No runs, no hits, no runs for the Bruins, and that's an assumption. Watch this There's play. The, the right, this is excellent. Watch the uh, concentration. Beautiful. I was trying to say, in the assumption, I do not have an official scoring on that play earlier when Stephanie Boyd reached first. It would have been a close play in any event, but uh, we'd have to rule at this point that Unless otherwise advised that it was an error on the shortstop. But in any event, neither team scored in the first inning. And due up in the top of the second will be Katie Minnick, Karen Jones, and Chris Bolin for the Lady Bruins. One of the things that really is enjoyable about watching the girls fast pitch softball, and certainly we encourage the fans, uh, uh, if not this year as the season is winding down, but certainly next year to get out and support these young ladies. It's a fast game. It's a very uh, quick-paced action, and it's exciting. I mean, it's, it, it's it really a game. Is. Uh, if anyone who ever has watched fast-pitch softball on a regular basis, it's not dissimilar at all to, uh, to the men's action that you might have seen in the Fox Hill uh, tournaments and so forth. But these young ladies play a, a very good brand of softball. They really do. Now, Katie is also on the uh, Bethel Bruins swim team, so she uh, uh, doesn't just play softball. She's also a swimmer. And as we mentioned, she was up last inning when the attempted steal, and of course, there for that reason, she will start as the leadoff batter. First pitch to her was a ball, and uh, batting 305 hasn't changed since I mentioned that in the first inning. Well, Tim, I wanted to mention about Jennifer Hughes that she got sick on the way up here, and that's why she's not playing. But this young lady is. Uh, uh, graduating either number one or number two in her senior class this year. She was the academic athlete at Bethel High School. Uh, is going to Texas A&M on an a academic scholarship. Is going to be a veterinarian. Uh, she's got a tremendous future ahead of her, and uh, we're just uh, real sorry she became ill and uh, it was unable to participate today. And you know she would have liked to have been the, the participant as a senior. Oh, she was taken all the way on that one, Katie was. That was a 3-0 pitch. Yep, 3-1 uh, is the count. Dunn winds, delivers, and this is fouled back. So the count now runs full. And we are working with a bit of a handicap, uh, and certainly through no lack of effort on Scotty Bowers and the crew's part to set up here. We, uh, we just we got an eight-foot fence that completely encircles this field, so we're working with the best we can. It looks like the picture's coming out pretty well. Foul down the first baseline. But the shot looks good, and if it shakes every now and then, it's because uh, Don Bell <laughs> and uh, uh, Melvin Hooker are up on top of that van, or the production vehicle, I should say. <laughs> Precariously, let's just say I'm glad the sky's cleared and we're not looking at uh, threatened lightning. <laughs> yeah, I know they're glad about I that. I know they are. Popped up right side, right fielder has a beat on it and makes the catch for the first out. And of course, we don't want to forget Jerome. He's right here uh, next to us, right at the Bruin dugout. And uh, we got Scotty and Alan Parker and Bev Penn in the truck. They've uh, been up here all afternoon trying to figure out where they were going to set up. and uh, Yeah, it was a, it was a real uh, challenge. And uh, Scotty has done a, an excellent job, as always, of bringing you the best possible coverage. Call strike to the batter, Karen Jones. She is the DH. 
Well, Scotty was saying something about uh, raindrops keep falling on his head or something. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, what happened is the, <laughs> the, the crew set up before we got here, and uh, it rained. They had to break down because they were afraid the equipment would get wet, and then shortly thereafter, it and stopped it, raining, so they had to set it back up again. Uh, they called that a strike. Uh, she thought she held up, but the uh, official said, no, the plate umpire said she went all the way around. That's who's that? Dave Hunt It's the uh, behind the plate. Oh, and to the cap. One out here in the second. And a change up. And Karen Jones looking for a fastball was way ahead of the pitch. So a fine looking change up delivered by Mandy Dunn is the junior. You can see a good look at her right there. Fooled Karen Jones on the pitch. So Chris Bolin, the right fielder, will be the batter with two down in the second. First pitch is high and outside for a ball. Well, Chris is just a sophomore, Tim, and she uh, batting around 388. Yeah, that this this Larry Eastep team has got an awful lot of uh, future in front of it. It really does. A very young team. Young team. The sophomores are, are doing extremely well. The juniors as well. And, of course, your ace pitcher is just a freshman. That's uh, very similar to the uh, uh, Lady Phantoms. I went over yesterday and uh, talked with the uh, Outdoor State Track Championships team of the uh, Phantoms and they have one senior the rest are freshmen and sophomores and and one or two juniors in there so they're looking we've got a lot of young athletes that have really stepped up this year on the peninsula two balls and one strike to Chris Bolin swing and a miss for strike two and we want to congratulate the uh, lady Phantoms for their their championship last weekend at Darling Stadium in the state outdoor track meet. And Bolin swings at a fast riser, a bad pitch. But uh, when you've got the speed that uh, this young uh, Mandy Dunn has, you are well, going to swing at some bad pitches on occasion. So she strikes out the second K of the inning, and the Bruins go down in order. And after one and a half innings, we have no score. Do up for the Blue Devils. They will have uh, Amy Barton, Heather Davis, and Sonny Barnes as we get a chance to watch some of the action. You see the effort by Dunn as she really puts her all into it. And what, uh, what was so interesting about that is that all you saw was the changeup. That yeah. was the one where she showed that real uh, strong apparent effort, and then the ball kind of floated over there. Yeah, that's uh, you, that's the key to the wind, uh, to the uh, changeup is everything looks the same except the ball comes in a little low, slower, and you are thinking fastball and are swinging as if it's a fastball and usually are well out in front of it. Barton, Davis, and Barnes do up for Verona. Bottom half of the second inning, no score. Well, that cleaned out my sinuses. <laughs> I don't know about you. I just heard an air raid siren <laughs> through my headset. Well, I was looking for the threatening clouds. <laughs> Those of you at home may not know it, but Bob and I just had our uh, eardrums cleaned out from some kind of sound interference. <laughs> Scotty keeps talking to us, but I can't hear well, him. He said something he... about the generator. He said oh. you can expect anything to happen. We're <laughs> running on a generator. So uh, we get some funny noises. Shortstop Amy Barden takes the first pitch from Joanne Andrews. A strike call. Randall Clary, the coach and manager down on the third baseline, giving the signals. A little bit outside, one and one the count. We talk a lot about the pitchers and how well they throw the ball and everything, Tim, but I tell you, the, the toughest position is that behind the plate. That catcher has got to really be uh, a tremendous athlete. Strike called at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Third baseman, Amy Barton, is the batter. Ring and a miss, strike three. So the second 
consecutive strikeout registered by Andrews. With one away in the bottom of the second, the batter, Heather Davis. She is the left fielder for Verona. Very fortunate in the weather conditions that are prevailing right now. We had threatening skies and a lot of lightning and apparent and clement weather staring us in the face about a half an hour before the game started. And uh, looks to be as it's cleared off beautifully. Well, and the little breeze is picking up too, which is uh, nice because it's a little humid. Temperature game time in the low 80s. And speaking of low, that pitch is a little bit low for ball two. Two and oh the count. One away in the bottom of the second. Ball three, so Andrews in jeopardy of walking the batter first of the ball game for her. Well, and uh, you expect this pitch to be uh, going down the middle and her taking all the way. And you're exactly correct. It was, and she did, and it uh, is three and one. Hit to short left field, in for a base hit. So Heather Davis with another Texas leaguer, both of the hits by Verina have been exactly that. Just, just in front of the uh, oncoming outfielder. So with a runner on first and one away, the batter is the third baseman, Sonny Barnes. Sonny Barnes. Sounds like a baseball player. Yes, it does. Good. Softball. Barnes squares around, bunts it nicely. Lessa Bradford, the first baseman, in on the play, right on top of the play. And the sacrifice by Barnes moves the runner to second. What a tremendous move. Oh, Lessa Bradford Whoa. was there about Whoa. the time the ball hit for the first time. And Tim, we're talking about four feet in front of that plate she was there. She got the ball about the same time the runner got to the ball. So two away now, and the batter will be the first baseman, Crystal Judy. Runner on second. First time either team has had a runner in scoring position. First pitch is a swinging strike. Oh, they're getting down to the uh, bottom end of their batting order, but uh, this Crystal Judy uh, is the first baseman, Tim, but uh, the, the average, as you were saying, there's no there's no weak spot in this uh, batting order. Worst case is you're batting 300. Yeah. Well, that's two strong strikes by uh, Joanne. She's uh, really fired two steamers across the plate. This one's popped up. First baseman Bradford calls for it and makes the catch. So the Bruins allow another base runner, but to uh, no harm as the runner is stranded on second. So two hits now for Verina, but no runs. We've played two full innings, and our game is still scoreless. And coming up in the top half of the third inning, we'll find the first baseman, Lessa Bradford, followed by Mary Goodwin, and Kelly Jarrell, the catcher, will be the third batter due up. Lessa Bradford had a real fine for, uh, inning that time. She made an excellent play on the bunt. And I believe that's what we're going to see here as you see Bradford inching up in your picture. And she is going to move up. And watch this. I mean, she literally is almost on home plate when the ball is laid down and the second baseman over to cover on an excellent play by the And it, it wasn't baseman. even close. I mean, and that's, again, what you were talking about, how close she was. It was an excellent bunt. It was. But uh, Lessa played that thing just the way it had to be played to uh, to record that out and did a great job. It was a great bunt because it moved the batter up or the runner up, and that's what you wanted to do. But uh, Joanne. Case of everybody doing their job. Yes. The, the batter did her job, and uh, Bradford and the second baseman for the Bruins did their job. And uh, the batter was advanced but stranded. And now we'll have Lessa Bradford leading off in the top half of the third inning. Lessa. And as I look down my list here, Lessa. 
Batting about a 304 is what I yep. got, Tim. Is, and she's just, she's just a junior. Another underclassman. Swing and a miss. Two strikes to count. Squared around showing bunt, of course, with uh, two strikes. Had she uh, attempted a bunt and fouled it back, she would have been a strikeout victim. But the pitch was high for a ball. One and two, nobody out in the third, no score. And a swinging bunt, if you will. Yes, and she squared around like she was gonna bunt, brings the uh, uh, first and third baseman in and then tries to slap it by him as, as uh, looked like what she was trying to do. So this will bring up Mary Goodwin. Mary is the left fielder. First pitch is a call strike. So Mary, who was not originally scheduled to start, is pressed into duty with the illness of Jennifer Hughes. And she takes call strike two. I'm impressed with uh, Mandy Dunn. <laughs> Miss Dunn has struck out the last three Lady Bruins as she seems to be warming to the task. Only one base runner for Bethel so far. And this one's popped up out of play. And that's an out, Tim. That it is an out. You're right. It's a registered strikeout as uh, with two strikes, she attempted the bunt. And that'll bring up the catcher, Kelly Gerald. Kelly with a 375 batting average, and she is also a sophomore. First pitch right down the middle. Swing and a miss. So behind on the count, 0 and 2 with two away. On deck for the Bruins is Melissa Bates. Should Kelly be able to keep the inning alive? Swing and a miss. So the side is struck out for the Lady Bruins, and that is five consecutive strikeouts for Mandy Dunn. Got a little help, though. Two of those strikeouts were attempted bunts, but uh, they are registered as the big K. Well, I tell you, she's got a, she's, she looks like she's got the groove, Tim. It's a, she, uh, sometimes what you got to do as a batter is back up, uh, make her take a little more time as we watch her on this, uh, on this pitch, and she's got tremendous delivery. Well, I mean, she just puts her entire body into that pitch. But sometimes if a pitcher gets in a groove, you gotta make them kind of break their, their rhythm somehow. And sometimes you have to step out of the box, take a little longer, uh, make her uh, think a little more about her pitch and things of that nature. But uh, right now she's pitching the ball real well, as is uh, uh, Joanne. Joanne Andrews is doing a good job for the uh, Bruins. She's got a couple of uh, Ks this, uh, in the first two innings of pitch. Bottom half of the third inning, we'll find the ninth batter, Kim Brewer, the leadoff batter. And then the top of the order, Sowers and Wade for the Blue Devils. No runs on two hits for Verina. No runs and no hits for the Bruins. And that is unofficial, I hasten to add. Uh, they could have ruled that uh, Stephanie Boyd reached on a base hit in the first inning. It was a close enough play. Yeah, I, I would have to call that a, a, an error on the throw because of the, it was close, but you never got a chance to see how close because the, the ball uh, didn't get. Brewer, Sowers, and Wade due up for Verina. 
Andrews' first pitch is a little low for a ball. High, ball two. So Andrews falls behind. One hit in the first inning, one hit in the second inning for Verona. Popped up, catcher. Nice play to make the catch. Wow. Kelly Jarrell with a great play. <laughs> and then threw a nice crossbody. Well, actually, she didn't. The, the, the batter tripped over her. But well, you're right. She just dove for that, uh, that ball. Great Kelly play. Jarrell. I called her Jarrell. It's Jarrell. Jarrell. And boy, what an excellent effort by her to make that catch. Watch this. As you watch the, the ball, a pop up. Now watch Gerald. She's just going to lunge in front of the runner, make the catch, and in doing so, trip up Kim Brewer. But that was all legal, and the first out registered on a great play by the catcher. Well, and Tim, she's just a sophomore, and that means that you, uh, Joanne, is going to have her, the same catcher for the next couple years, which always makes you feel good. Ball two. So Joanne having a little difficulty finding the range here in the third inning. Nakoma Sowers, who popped out in the first inning, is ahead on the count. Two balls, no strikes. Popped up, right side. And a tough chance as Lessa Bradford could not get to the ball. Also, it was a ball that might have been playable for the second baseman, Melina Edwards, but it was a tough chance in any case. Well, you see where uh, Lesser is moving up and uh, uh, guarding for the bunt, and she was really out of position for that play. That was really the second baseman's play, although it's easy to see in hindsight. Three and one as the pitch apparently at a little low. One away in the third. No score between Bethel and Verina. Popped up. And Melina Edwards makes the call and makes the catch for the second out. Well, that was the one she should have had. To, you know, so she got it anyway, right? Two outs. To her credit, if she had made the catch on that earlier play, it would have been a spectacular play. And I think this fence is probably a little intimidating to the Yeah, well, and this is well. one thing that we notice when we come up here, how, how little room there is to the, uh, to the fence. Colleen Wade is the batter. She was a ground out victim in the first inning. She takes the first pitch for a ball. Two away in the bottom half of the third. Swing and a miss. I tell you, uh, what right now is what's happening is the Bruins are getting a lot of help from their from the defense, and this will give the the uh, pitcher a lot of confidence, knowing that you've got that kind of backing. A little bit low, ball two. This is the kind of game that Joanne pitched against Great Bridge when they won the Eastern Regional quarterfinal in that uh, she wasn't necessarily overpowering, uh, but she caused a lot of, of uh, pop-ups that the infielders were just able to handle easily or, or uh, rather weak ground outs. And uh, she just dominated uh, by the fact that she kept the ball in play and her, and her defense was superb. And they just never got a good piece of the ball when they were uh, swinging this, which when they did hit it, you mean. Exactly. Strike three call. Oh, wow, what a nice pitch. Whoa. So the third strikeout of the ball game, and one, two, three in order goes Verina. And we have played three full innings, and our score still Bethel nothing, Verina no score. For the Bruins, they will have the top of the order due up as they have only had one base runner. Uh, Stephanie Boyd was the base runner, and she was erased on an attempted steal. So through three innings, Mandy Dunn has faced the Strike memo. Out. Here we watch a little replay, and this is the called strike three, and uh, the Verina player, uh, Wade, did not believe the call. No. <laughs> well, you're not, not going to find many batters that, that are going to believe the third strike was a strike. <laughs> if you don't swing at it. That's right. 
Oh, what a so, nice afternoon this turned out to be. Had our doubts earlier. As you were saying, we ran into quite a bit of rain coming up here. And uh, Scott and his crew up here were playing raindrops keep falling on my head. And I had to scramble and get things set back up again. But uh, our hats off to the crew. They've done a great job. Top half of the fourth inning will find the leadoff batter, Melissa Bates, followed by Boyd and Edwards for the Bruins. Mandy Dunn has struck out five consecutive Bruins. There you see a good look at her. And a call strike to Bates. Well, he's consistent. He's been the uh, umpire, uh, Dave Hunt. That ball right at the knees has been called for both pitchers. Consistency is all you can ever really ask for. Strike two to Bates. And I think you, uh, you phrased it correctly a while ago that she is in the groove. She is really delivering consistently in the strike zone and not all down the middle either. Bates swings and hits it sharply to the first baseman and she will just simply tag the runner. But Bates able to get a bat on the ball. An unassisted ground out to the first baseman and Stephanie Boyd, the only Bethel base runner, will be the batter. She reached on either an error or a infield hit, however it was registered in the first inning. Call strike at the knees. It seems like that's the first place she uh, uh, places that first pitch, Tim, is low. I, I can't tell if it's inside, but it's, it's right at the knees and it's being called a strike. This one a little lower and that is a ball. One and one the count. One out here in the top of the fourth. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz, happy to bring you this Group AAA state quarterfinal game between the Lady Bruins of Bethel High as the ball is fouled back out of play. And the Blue Devils of Verina High School in Richmond, the Colonial District Champion as well as the Central Regional Champion taking on the Peninsula runner-up Buffalo Bruins and the Eastern Regional runner-up. And the change-up pitch, and uh, Stephanie Boyd able to resist that one. Well, it was a little high, or she would have probably been swinging. It uh, evens the count out at two and two. Fouled back out of play. And an error on the fan. <laughs> Two and two with one away. Nobody on. Low ball three. That's a good eye, Tim. Excellent eye and was not even uh, uh, hesitant. Uh, uh, she didn't have to hold up on a swing or anything. She watched the pitch the whole way. Ball four. So we have the second base runner for the Bruins. And uh, the second base runner is, in fact, the same person that was the first base runner. Tim, I'm looking at the field over there by uh, first. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, that uh, topping there is very loose, which will make a slow track if you're trying to steal. So uh, let's see what happens. Melina Edwards is the batter. First pitch is a ball. So Boyd has reached safely both times she's been up. And Melina Edwards, who popped out to the right fielder on an excellent play by the right fielder in the first inning, takes strike one. One and one the count. Good look from our right field position a moment ago as you see the base runner. Bunt is laid down, and it is a foul ball. Ball was caught by the catcher in foul territory. So Boyd will return to first. You notice Larry is, is uh, bunting on the second strike rather than the first strike, trying to, to catch the uh, Verona team uh, back on their heels a little bit.
Ball two, two and two the count. One away in the fourth inning. No score, Verina and Bethel. Ball is hit to the center fielder. And she'll make the catch for the second out. So second time in the ball game that Melina Edwards has made contact and hit it to an outfielder. But if she can get the ball down and keep it on the ground, we may see her uh, get on base. That was uh, that one was hit right to the to the center fielder. That first one, Tim, was as you said, the right fielder made an excellent play to catch it. It was out of bounds. I mean, uh, in foul territory, but uh, she caught it before she ran into the fence. Katie Minnick is the batter with two down. And her first pitch is a call strike. Stephanie Boyd, again, the base runner, wanting to go. But certainly the Bruins would like to advance her to second or, or at least get her around if they could in a pitcher's duel. Change up, hit sharply back to Mandy Dunn, the pitcher, over to first for the third out. So Mandy Dunn does a good job of fielding as she uh, Played the ball cleanly and threw out Katie Minnick for the third out. And we move to the bottom half of the fourth inning. By the way, uh, they play seven innings in girls' fast pitch softball. And due up will be the pitcher, Mandy Dunn. She'll be followed by the catcher, Sherry Lanning, and the third baseman, Amy Barden. The batter's due up for Verina. You see the uh, crowd on hand ringing the field here at Verina High School. It's a real pretty uh, softball field. Of course, the seating capacity is not a great one. Here you see the replay of the pop out to the center fielder, an easy play for the second out of that inning a moment ago. The lights have been on here. Although it's kind of an interesting situation, there are no lights in the outfield. All of the lighting is around the first and third baseline. Not sure how that will affect the play in, in the outfield as it gets darker, if, if in fact we have to concern ourselves with that. There you see the light standards ringing the field here around uh, third base and first base. So Dunn will be the batter. She had a single for one of the two hits recorded so far by Verina. Andrews delivers a ball. There you see Joanne, a freshman for Larry Eastep's Tim, I have to make a, an apology to uh, Stephanie Boyd. She's the young lady who is the uh, uh, valedictorian or the salutatorian for the Bruins. <laughs> Not Jennifer Hughes. That's uh, my mistake, and I apologize for that. She's the young lady that's going to Texas A&M is going to be a veterinarian. Andy Dunn hits it sharply, but right to the center fielder, Melissa Bates, for the first out. That'll bring up the catcher, Sherry Lanning. She was a strikeout victim in the first inning. Andrews with three strikeouts in the ballgame. Fouled back for a strike. One away here in the bottom of the fourth. No score between Verina and Bethel. Single elimination. The winner advances to the state semifinals. The loser goes home. This one hit in the gap between center and left. Lanning digging for second. And she will hold up at second with a double to left center. What a nice hit. So with one away, the Verina Blue Devils have a player in scoring position. And this will bring up the third baseman, Amy Barden. 
She was a strikeout victim of Joanne Andrews in the second inning. Excuse me, yeah, second inning. This one is hit to center, and this will be over the head of Melissa Bates. It'll score a run. So the Bruins playing shallow and hustling to third base is Amy Barton with a triple. Well, that's three times three batters have gotten good contact on that ball. Uh, uh, first pitch on all three of them, I believe, Tim. Truly a case of the outfielders in both cases playing in and I'm not criticizing that decision. I'm just saying that had they been back deeper, they would have been in a position to perhaps make the play. Well, on that one, especially the other one looked like it was hit in a gap. I don't care where you were playing. If it's hit in a gap, it's a hard ball to uh, get a hold of. But that one was definitely just over the center fielder's head. And in all fairness to uh, that young lady, that is not her normal position. She normally plays uh, left field. And this will bring up Heather Davis, the left fielder for Verana. Runner on third and one out, one run in. Andrews tries to stem the tide. First pitch is fouled back for a strike. Hit to the third baseman. She holds the runner over to first. Play at home and safe at home. The throw was just a little low, Tim, uh, and outside had it been right on, a, on the uh, money, that would have been a real close play at the plate as we watch the, uh, the replay. Watch the play here, the ball hit slowly to third base. An excellent play by the third baseman to get the ball. She held the runner as long as she could, threw over to first. Now you're gonna see this, if the, the throw is in time. She just couldn't get a handle on it. Yep. Had she played it cleanly, she could have tagged out the runner at home, but it was not to be. And the run scores the second of the inning. There you see the score now, two to nothing with two away, and the batter is the third baseman, Sonny Barnes. First pitch is a little low for a ball. So two hits in the inning, a double and a triple have led to the two runs. Ball two a little low. Sonny Barnes sacrificed in the second inning. Swing and a miss. Two balls and one strike with two away in the fourth. Strike two called. Count is even at two and two with two outs and two runs in the inning. Deuces are wild. That's four of a kind. Popped up, third base side, called for and caught for the third out. That was the shortstop that made that catch, Tim, coming over there was uh, Stephanie Boyd, number eight. So two hits in the inning and two runs. And after four complete innings, it's Verina two and Bethel no score. So the Bruins now in the top half of the fifth inning will be led off by Karen Jones. We get a chance to uh, watch a replay here of the last out, I believe it is. No, this is the uh, this is the ball that was in the gap. This was the double, the first hit of the inning. 
by Sherry Lanning. And now we'll see the uh, the triple, Tim. The uh, the hit right after that particular hit, if we've got it on uh, replay. This is it here, and this goes all the way to the fence. Is the reason she got the uh, the triple, but you're, it went over the head, and you can see it goes right to the fence. And she is rounding second by the time uh, the center fielder got to the ball. As we get back to live action and uh, uh, strike one on our the batter. And who is the batter? Karen Jones, the DH, leading off in the fifth. She, Karen Jones also on the uh, cheerleading squad for the Bruins. Uh, one they, and one account. They went down to uh, Texas over the Christmas holidays for competition, the uh, girl cheerleaders there at the Bruins at Bethel High School. Swing and a miss. So Mandy Dunn with that ferocious windup blazes that ball by Karen Jones for strike two. One and two. High for a ball. Top half of the fifth inning. Bethel trailing two to nothing. Fouled out of play. Young lady on your screen, just a junior for this team. She'll have another year. Change up is high. Runs the count full. Karen Jones leading off, Chris Bolin and Lessa Bradford to follow. Foul back out of play. She stays in it, Tim. She's a, uh, got a good eye, and that's the reason she is the DH for the Bruins. She also led the team with three triples, actually tied Melina Edwards in that department. The Bruins could uh, really use a hit right here. And the ball is hit back sharply to Mandy Dunn over to first for the first out. So... Uh, Contact again by the Bruins, but right back to the pitcher. And this will bring up Chris Bolin, who struck out in the second inning. Now, Chris was second team all district at uh, right field. And that she is the leading batter on this Bruin team. 388. And a sophomore at that. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Fifty-four at bats for Chris Bolin during the regular season. Sixteen hits in fifty-four attempts. Hits this one a pop-up. Short stop over for it and makes the catch for the second out. There were no less than four young ladies around that ball. The batter will be the first baseman, Lessa Bradford. Lessa, a strikeout victim in the third inning. Interestingly enough, uh, Dunn struck out five in a row and then now has not struck out anyone in six consecutive batters, but has managed to cause the Bruins to either pop it up or ground it out. And this one's popped up as well. The pitcher, Dunn, calls for it and makes the catch. So three up and three down for the Bruins as they go quietly in the fifth inning. And after four and a half innings, our score, two to nothing in favor of Verona. Tape change. Tim. And we will return to Verona High School after a brief timeout. Yes. 
sun setting to uh, our right behind us there. And it's a little, little dark clouds over there. <laughs> nah. No oh, well that's going to stay over there. Okay. Bottom half of the fifth inning for Verona. They will have Crystal Judy, followed by Kim Brewer. And then the top of the order, Nakoma Sowers. <laughs> It's a good shot of the scoreboard. Just looked over in the area behind the van there. The, oh, man, is that pretty or what? Pretty night. Late spring here the, what day is this? This is the 11th, 11th of, June, of June. Yes. 1993. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz, pleasure to bring you what could be the last of our spring sports coverage. We've had a great uh, uh, athletic year on the peninsula. Strike called to the batter, Crystal Judy. She popped out to the first baseman in the second inning. Well, in the Peninsula District, in the Hampton City's schools alone, there's uh, four state champions. Uh, you got the Bethel Bruins football team state champions, Bethel Bruin boys basketball team state champions, the Bethel Bruin indoor girls track team state champions, and the outdoor girls Phoebus track team. Popped up. Second baseman makes the catch for the first out. And Kim Brewer will be the batter. She popped out to the catcher on a spectacular play by Kelly Gerald as she dove for the ball and tripped up the batter in the effort. That's got to be one of the best plays of the day as uh, individually that we have seen. And this year, that's, it's got to go down as one of, the, uh, one of the better plays that we've seen. Swinging strike on the first pitch. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. Strike two. So we do want to reflect a little bit on this past season, and boy, it has been a season for the Peninsula District, as you said. The excitement of the Bethel Bruins boys football and basketball teams, the indoor and outdoor track teams, We've certainly enjoyed bringing you as much as we could possibly bring you in a strike three swinging strikeout for Kim Brewer. We have thoroughly enjoyed this season. I know I speak for both of us without even asking you. Uh, we've just uh, had the best time and certainly hope our viewers here on Channel 5 have enjoyed our coverage. The batter, the leadoff batter, Nakoma Sowers with two out in the fifth. Sowers popped out to the second baseman twice. This time she hits it foul down the third baseline, just foul. I tell you, Tim, if that had been a, a couple more inches, it might have been a uh, hit, but the uh, third baseman was doing a good job guarding the line. Inside for a ball. One and one the count. Two away in the fifth. Joanne Andrews. Delivers for a strike. One ball and two strikes. Nakoma Sowers is the batter. 0 for 2. Good shot there of... Uh Joanne Andrews. Pop up, left side, and a tough chance for the shortstop. She's unable to make the, the play. Well, her, she took a step in, Tim, and then the ball floated over her head, and she just couldn't get turned around in time. Uh, that's got to be an error. So Sowers will reach on the error with two away, and it'll bring up the right fielder, Colleen Wade, who is 0 for 2. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here kind of thinking about this, and I'm certainly not writing this game off because 2-0 is by no means a finished game. As you see the replay here, the shortstop came in and then had to back up and just couldn't quite make the catch. Runner fakes to go down, but uh, the first baseman, Bradford, was in on the play and was unable to get back to make a, a play at first. But as I reflect back on this, this has got to be a great experience for Larry Estep's team win, lose, or draw this afternoon. These, this very young team will uh, mature greatly, I'm sure, from this contest. Ball hit sharply up the middle. Shortstop, again, trouble with it and can't get the out. So all runners are safe. 
Well, she hurried that throw, Tim. If, if she hadn't hurried it, she could have possibly made the play. But once she kind of fumbled the ball a little bit, she knew that she was it was going to be a close play and just uh, overthrew the ball. But uh, Lessa made a great play on first to stop it, not letting the ball get by her. But we have two outs. Runners at first and second, and the batter is the pitcher, Mandy Dunn. She is one for two. Singled in the first, popped out in the fourth. Hits the ball again to the shortstop. This time, the play is an out. So if at first you don't succeed, keep on trying. Keep on and, trying. And she stuck with it. Stephanie Boyd, a tough chance there uh, a couple of times this inning, but the third time was the charm as the Bruins escape any further scoring by Verina, give up a couple of errors in the inning. And after five full innings, our score two to nothing as we watch a replay of the previous action. You're gonna see the, the ball hit just up the middle and Boyd makes a good play. Well, this is the play before that, I apologize. This is where she tried to make the play and then Bradford did a good job, as you said, Bob, of preventing the ball from getting by she sure and did, advancing the runner. Because that could have resulted in those two runners uh, advancing, or at least the runner on second could advance to uh, the third, and then that gives you a little different look if you're pitching and uh, it makes your defense play a little different position too as we watch the uh, replay of the, uh, of the out that uh, closed out the season, or clo closed out the inning, I'm sorry. <laughs> Over to first for the third out of the inning. So three tough chances for Stephanie Boyd, and uh, she handled the last one uh, perfectly. Well, it, she really did, Tim. And in all fairness to her, that first error she had, it was a little pop-up. But what she did was she took the step in and then realized that there was kind of a floater. And it uh, with the backspin, it just kind of floated over. And she turned and got a glove on it. But that would have been a sensational catch had she made it. So it's getting late for the Bruins, top half of the sixth inning, and the leadoff batter will be Mary Goodwin, the left fielder. She struck out her only other time at bat. First pitch is a called strike. A little bit low for a ball. Mandy Dunn. A masterful game so far has allowed just two base runners and no hits. Squaring around, attempting the butt is Goodwin for strike two. Swing and a miss for the third strike. Well, Larry is trying to get a runner on base, and you you got to get something started. You need a little rally. You got to get somebody on base, and uh, he's going to uh, talk to the batter, and that's uh, number 13. Who is that, Tim? Michelle Suits, who will pinch hit for Kelly Gerald. Michelle Suits, uh, who also pitches and has a 3-0 record. She is just a freshman. An opportunity for the freshman to get a little uh, state championship uh, experience. Started the swing, held up, and took the first pitch for a strike. One away here in the top of the sixth. Well, you're not, you got to know Mandy Dunn is starting to smell it. She figures she's got six outs to close this thing up. Popped up and caught for the second out of the inning by the catcher. A nice play. She put her glove out there, and that ball just seemed to know where to go. It was a great play. Sherry Lanning with the nice play. And this will bring up the top of the order. Melissa Bates. Bates is 0 for 2. Melissa with a 305 batting average. Takes a strike. 
Mandy Dunn getting stronger as the game goes on. Ball was in the dirt. And they appealed down to first base. The first base umpire says, yes, she did go around. That was John Cobb at first base. Larry Estep now would like to uh, know a little more about that play. Well, I, I was a little surprised that he called that a, a strike. She went down to, to uh, bunt. The ball was low. She looked like she pulled back, and he said, no, she swung. But uh, she didn't really swing, and it was a good shot of the – here we watch that play, Tim. Well, you make the call. It's a tough call yeah, no matter how tough. you do it. Since Mr. Cobb is the umpire and he knows the rules and we'll go along with this call. Melissa Bates thought about going after that high pitch. Of course, it doesn't take much to be high for her. She's not particularly <laughs> tall. She's a little one. A diminutive, uh, the word I can't say, I shouldn't try. Fakes the bunt. This time, clearly gets the bat back in time to avoid a call strike. So the count now is even at two and two, with two outs here in the top of the sixth. Time running out for the Lady Bruins. She does, in fact, bunt it, but it's right to Mandy Dunn for the third out. So she did what she was trying to do. She got the bat on the ball, but it went right to Dunn. And still the Bruins looking for their first hit. We've played five and a half innings, and this will bring up in the bottom of the sixth inning for the Blue Devils. They will have Sherry Lanning, who had a double last time up, Amy Barden, who tripled the last time up, and Heather Davis. This is the play by the catcher, Tim. Watch the replay here. This is a great catch by the uh, with that pop up. Now watch, she just walks over, just puts that glove out, and the ball just drops right in it. I mean, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's called making it look easy. <laughs> Well, Joanne Andrews certainly has pitched an excellent ball game this afternoon. She's allowed just four hits to this potent Varina attack. When you th consider that this team averages 383, and uh, she has just really scattered four hits. Uh, one hit in the first inning, one hit in the second, and then those two together with the, uh, the fielder's choice scoring the second run uh, on what could have been a double play if uh, the catcher could have just had a little better chance to hold on to that ball. But it was not to be. Well, Tim, and, and you know also that as, as good as this team is, as batting uh, Verina, that once you get into this competition, you are going to face much different competition uh, from the mound. And uh, that's what uh, Joanne Andrews has done today. She is, I think, has pitched an, an excellent game. The, most certainly, the freshman has shown uh, real uh, success out on the mound in spite of the fact that she or her team is trailing. Ball hit, foul down the third baseline. One and one the count. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Verina looking to add to their 2 nothing lead. Sherry Lanning, the batter, hits it again sharply down the third baseline, but foul. So Joanne Andrews again ahead on the count. Joanne with four strikeouts this afternoon. A conference with uh, Coach Larry Estep. I'm not sure what that is all about. Joanne wanted to know something, but uh, we will probably never know what it was <laughs> she wanted to know. Nobody out. One ball, two strikes to the batter. Hit 
to uh, short left. Bates up with the ball, in, and will hold the runner to a double. Good effort by the left fielder to get to the ball. Really was, and slipped as she got to the ball and still got a nice throw into the third baseman. That was Mary well. Goodwin who made a fine effort at it. And uh, the second consecutive double for the catcher, Sherry Lanning. To lead off here in the sixth inning. And the batter will be Amy Barton, who had a triple her last time up. Strike call. We don't have the individual batting averages, but I'll tell you, this young lady on second uh, landing impresses me with the way she swings the bat. She really has a nice swing. She does that and makes great contact with the ball. Swing and a miss by Barden. So Joanne Andrews ahead on the count here with nobody out. Bruins cannot afford to allow any more runs. Swing and a miss. So the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Joanne. And with one away now, the batter is Heather Davis. Now Each that young lady she just struck out, Tim, is that the one that hit the trumpet last yep, time up? Sure okay. Was. She has struck out Amy Barden two of the three times. They a step over to uh, talk to his third baseman. It looks like she may have pulled a muscle or something, Tim, and he wanted to find out how she, how she was uh, faring. And uh, she says, "Hey, I'm, I'm in here for the duration." Runner on second, one away. Heather Davis, one for two. First pitch is inside for a ball. Popped up out of play. One and one the count, one away. Bottom of the sixth inning, Verina ahead two to nothing. Hit foul, out of play. She got around on that pitch. One ball and two strikes to the batter. Davis pops it up. Short right field, center fielder comes over and makes the catch for the second out. And she clearly called for that ball the whole way, Tim, and uh, had her eye on it, had a good jump on the ball. That was Melissa Bates making the catch, and it brings up the third baseman, Sonny Barnes. She sacrificed in the second and flying out in the fourth. Two away, runner on second. Swing and a miss. Strike two.
Bethel Crab thought it was a strike. It was not to be, and it's one ball and two strikes to count. That looked like an excellent pitch. I don't know how what's, how square it was on the across the base, but it was in the strike zone as far as uh, high and low goes. Strike three called. So two strikeouts in the inning for Andrews. Six in the ball game and no walks. Uh, you know, let's let's talk about some things here, uh, regardless of what happens here in the top of the seventh. Joanne Andrews has pitched a great ball game against an incredibly potent team. Well, she really has, especially with a team that's got a batting av team batting average of of over 380. Uh, that gives you a tremendous amount of, of confidence. Uh, I know Larry Step's got a, uh, you know, he's got mixed emotions as we watched this last uh, strikeout. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, this is the uh, the double. An excellent effort on the play, but the ball was chased down quickly by Melissa Bates. Well, what, the point I was trying to make is Joanne Andrews has shown tremendous uh, control, Tim, as she's not been wild. She has not walked anybody, as you said. Uh, she's kept the uh, ball around the plate. She's mixed up her pitchers real well. And uh, this young lady's got three more years at Bethel High School. And uh, as anybody will tell you in uh, baseball or softball, it's all in your pitching staff. If you got a, if you got good pitchers, <laughs> then uh, you've got to jump on the other team. And uh, this young lady has definitely shown that she's got some tremendous potential with uh, three more years remaining. Got a couple of good pitchers on this team, too. We haven't seen Michelle Suits, but she's 3-0, and and she's just a freshman. So uh, Larry certainly building for the future. I mean, you want to win the big ones uh, early if you can, but uh, certainly some very positive things coming out of this ballgame. And the defense, uh, except for a couple of minor lapses, has played extremely well as well. So the, the Bruins trailing as we go to the top of the seventh. And the batter up for the Bruins. Leadoff batter is Stephanie Boyd. Stephanie takes a strike, one and one. Well, if you're Mandy uh, Dunn, you've got to think three outs and uh, this game is history. Mandy has allowed one run in three postseason games. Ball hit to the shortstop over to first in time for the up. So Stephanie Boyd looking to reach base for the third time in this ball game. Fails to do so. And the second batter will be Melina Edwards. Melina popped out and uh, in the first and popped out in the fourth. Mandy Dunn going for the no-hitter. Strike call. Swing and a miss. And Melina Edwards was swinging for the fence on that one. She, she had a was good that. cut. She was that. A real good cut. <laughs> 254 batting average for the junior, another underclassman. Popped it up right side. Could be a tough chance, but the right fielder is there to make the catch. And the second out is recorded. And now the Bruins one out away from elimination as Katie Minnick will be their last hope. Katie's done a great job down here on third base today, has made some good plays. Um, looked like she might have pulled a muscle, but uh, she told Larry, nah, just a little cramp, it's okay, let's go. Two away in the seventh. Two to nothing, Bethel behind. Minnick takes a strike. <laughs> Foul back, strike two. Ball caught in the net.
So one strike away from advancing to the state semifinals, Verina Mandy Dunn with a no-hitter going, unofficially. I still think that first inning uh, will be an error. Yeah. Two base runners for the Bruins. Stephanie Boyd on an error. And this could be the first hit it is. And that was a changeup, and she kind of kind of hesitated and ch a check swing and made a great play on that ball. You'd you think that she would be thinking of, uh, I'm swinging at the, at the ball and be way out in front of it. What a great job uh, uh, Katie did that time. So Karen Jones will be the batter. Just the third base runner for the Bruins, and uh, you, you got to feel a bit for Mandy Dunn as she has had a great game and allows her first and only hit here in the seventh. Jones swings and misses. A clean base hit from Katie Minnick, and she will be one for three on the evening. Karen Jones hit the right side over to first, and that is your ball game. So the Lady Bruins get the first hit of the ball game, but are unable to do more as Mandy Dunn is dominant, and the Lady Bruins lose to Verina by the final score of two to nothing but certainly through no lack of effort by Larry oh, Eastep's squad. You got that right. I, I tell you, a lot of people didn't think that the Bruins would even get this far, but uh, Larry brought this team a long way this year, Tim, starting with a, a pitcher, brand new, just as a freshman to come in and do as well as uh, she, Joanne has done, and uh, just makes you uh, take your hands off to this team. They have nothing to be ashamed of they've uh, they beat a got beat by a, a team that could very well be the uh, state champions this young lady Mandy Dunn did a, a great job but our hats off to the Bethel Bruins and uh, and uh, all I can say is to the peninsula watch out for this group next year there you see be tough. in your picture the lady Bruins finishing the season at 17 and 6 and advancing to the state quarterfinals before running into a superb effort by Verina and Mandy Dunn as she allowed just one hit over seven innings and led her team to a two to nothing victory over the Lady Bruins. And again, uh, we want to take a minute to thank our crew as uh, uh, we have all year. These guys and gals come out and spend hours setting up for these a telecast there you see one of our crew there's jerome young leading up against the fence so we get to sit down the whole time uh, jerome is standing and, and working hard all the time our other camera people today don bell up on the truck along with as we get a shot of them i would imagine there we go close-up shot there's big don don <laughs> bell uh, giving up his friday evening to bring this contest to you and next to him mr melvin cbs hooker yes and, and they, uh, you know, and you know those guys. There is a good shot of uh, Melvin, and they don't do too much tap dancing on top of that <laughs> truck. <laughs> uh, I tell you, and in the truck, of course, we've got. Uh, How am I going to get that shot? And I don't know. Alan <laughs> Parker is uh, doing our uh, slow motion. Bev Penn is doing our uh, all the graphics, and of course, uh, Scotty Bowers uh, has just done a great job all all year long, and as this whole crew has, and. We really appreciate the effort they put in and uh, get out early and get things set up and we can just walk in here and sit down and go to town. All right, that's going to do it. And again, that's going to do it for the uh, scholastic year of 92-93. Uh, a great season it was for the Hampton City Schools. As we mentioned, the championships, four of them for the city of Hampton. A great season. Hope you enjoyed it here on Channel 5. Uh, we certainly enjoyed every minute of bringing you all the, the action as we did for uh, baseball, basketball, football, and softball, and soccer in there, That's too. Correct. Our congratulations to Kikatan for advancing to the regionals in soccer. So certainly a, a, a great season all across the board for the Hampton City Schools. The final score again, Verina 2 and Bethel nothing. For Bob Hintz, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon, everybody.